What's up everybody, Thralls Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick and I have yet another album review for you. This was a pretty busy week. And there were a lot of releases and unfortunately some that I had to overlook, but I wanted to do one more bonus review just because I know people were asking for this one. And I can see why, because this band has been around forever and they have such a loyal fan base. And uh, I definitely wanted to cover them. So we are going to go over the latest offering from Primordial, How It Ends. This also comes out on the 29th of September on Metal Blade Records. This band formed in Dublin, Ireland in either 1992 or 1991. I get some conflicting information. It says in the archives, 92. I'm just going to go with them because they probably know a little bit more about metal. This is their 10th full length overall and first in five years. And well, uh, full disclosure, uh, I have never listened to an entire Primordial album until like right now. Now I've heard songs in the past on like samplers and such, and I've really liked what I've heard. I just never got around to picking up any of their stuff. So now I'm kind of in this like weird position where I feel like I found a new band that I really like and uh, they've been around forever and I'm just playing catch up like big time here. That does kind of happen often on here, but uh, with this one, it's gonna be kind of an interesting review just because I don't have any of their previous albums to really compare this to. In fact, the only thing I have that is like remotely adjacent to this is the last Dread Sovereign album, which features their singer A.A. Nemthianga. Might have got that right, knowing my track record, probably not, and there's stuff in Gaelic on here, so I'm gonna probably struggle with that, so get ready for that. But yeah, that is it, and for those that don't know, this band is uh, described as a Celtic folk metal band slash black metal band. I've even heard them called like a doom metal band with those traits too, and honestly, it's really kind of hard to uh, call them any one thing. There's definitely a blend of different styles on here, and it all really works well together. The closest things I could compare this to, at least offhand while I was listening to this, there's definitely some doomy elements that remind me of like Candlemass and Solitude Eternus. On the black metal side, it definitely reminds me a bit of Enslaved. And on the folk metal side, granted, I don't listen to a lot of folk metal. Uh, Teresis, Teresis, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that band's name, but I do have one of their albums and it is kind of similar. What I will definitely say about this album, it is a journey of an album. First off, it is 65 minutes long and most of the songs are over the seven minute mark on here. But the songs are really cool in terms of like their labored pace. The opening track, the title track opens up kind of more anthemic, albeit dark. The thing that I really like is you get a lot of contrasting emotions sort of playing off of one another. The song has like sort of a rousing epic feel, it gallops, it's very, you know, just powerful sounding. And then the vocals come in, which AA's vocals are absolutely fantastic. He has this gruff delivery where he can growl and scream and key, and it sounds amazing. It sounds urgent, desperate, but also very powerful. But his desperate vocals paired with the very anthemic riffs really kind of give this like an interesting feel right away and i have to say the production here is excellent i love the sound of the drums especially they sound so natural they're very upfront. they're driving every song and me being kind of new to this band i was kind of wondering all right is this opening track kind of the pace setter and it really wasn't as this album goes you go down a lot of different avenues as this album continues you go down some more doomy passages with songs like all against all Death, Holy Death, and Pilgrimage to the World's End, which is an absolutely fantastic song. And I mean, just because I could hear the lyrics and how passionately he was delivering them, I actually decided to look at the lyrics for once, because generally I just kind of ignore lyrics. You know, granted, it's not like a diss on lyric writing, it's just sort of secondary for me. And the lyrics are dark. There's a really cool storytelling aspect to a lot of them. That song in particular is essentially about, well, I mean, the, the song title. It's essentially a group of people sailing to their doom and they're not changing course because it's kind of their fate. Like, that's the whole vibe of it. And honestly, I think with a lot of these stories, they don't end pretty. Like, this is kind of a dark, foreboding album for the most part, and I think most of these stories probably end like, I don't know, the end of The Mist, which if any of you have seen The Mist, we know that is like the 
darkest fucking ending I think I've ever seen in any movie still. You have some more black and touches on plows to rust, swords to dust, and we shall not serve. But all this is kind of a blend, and that's what I really like because it can kind of just switch gears on you to different styles, and the folk elements on here are really interesting and kind of played down to just a level where they're like more or less a seasoning. Like a lot of this is just very dark, brooding, lots of heavy riffs all over the place, but you get these folky harmonies, and honestly, some of the harmonies kind of range from like old school trad metal. Like there's definitely some like Iron Maiden flourishes, but the cool thing is when they start those guitar harmonies, really it's, you know, an isolated guitar and you can hear that folky lick. And then when they are harmonized, you kind of hear that sort of trad metal sort of, you know, touch to it. Plows to Rust, Swords to Dust does that in excellent fashion. And I love the sort of like swingy drum pattern to it. Like it's almost tribal, but it's kind of almost like a, I don't know, like a Black Sabbath sort of swing to the drum pattern, but it alternates between that and like a stomping black metal section where the double bass is going, you get these cold tremolo riffs. But when those harmonies come in, you're reminded of both like just folk music in general and again, like trad metal. And if it isn't apparent in plows, it's pretty apparent in transistenta. I think that's how you say that. It's Gaelic and it means traditional which is a lot easier to say than most words in Gaelic. But you can hear that sort of like folk to trad metal sort of transition with the uh, guitars being harmonized. That song is also a good example of where their folk side comes to the forefront too. A lot of these songs, again, it's more of a blend. Like you can alternate to like doom metal, especially on Death, Holy Death, which honestly gets like a little bit bluesy in there. Like that definitely gave me like the Solitude Eternus vibes. But when their folk side really takes the forefront, it's actually pretty damn epic. Call to Cernunus, Cernunus, I don't know. Apparently it is the Gaelic god of beasts and wild places. Sounds like a pretty cool god. It's pretty much a folk song with just like some metallic parts to it to give it like an extra punch. Like this is a song you could river dance in the pit to and I don't think anyone would look at you sideways like, no, that's kind of the right thing to do. I mean, we can still push each other a little bit, but yeah, no, River Dance It Up. But the song is pretty much a traditional folk song with just some metallic elements to give it a little bit of heft. You have a steady war drum pace to it. There are some big, you know, folky melodies with good metallic guitars behind them. And then they drop out in favor of, you know, gang vocals, essentially. Like, you get big vocal harmonies that are, like, you know, kind of... I don't know, like, uh, you think of, like, folky bar music and, like, sort of rousing chants to kind of get the crowd going. It's exactly that, except it's praising a god of beasts and wild places. And, I mean, that sounds like a party god anyway. But I like how they drop out the guitars and riffs in favor of letting the drums and the vocals really carry it. And the last track, which is kind of a rousing, folky epic, Victory Has a Thousand Fathers, Defeat is an Orphan, that's that's a cool title. That's pretty wild. That song is fast paced. It's got like, you know, sort of that anthemic galloping into battle quality. And given like the nature of the rest of the album being very dark and sullen and just kind of miserable in spots, it's kind of a cool way to close the album with something bright and shining, like a ray of hope just sort of trickled in and just got everyone going and fighting for their lives. I really dug that song and it was kind of surprised again with the tone of the album throughout most of it being again more sullen and hearing this rousing epic towards the end like even the opening track the title track granted it has like a nice vigorous galloping pace to it it doesn't feel like a rousing song it feels again like you know uh, we're probably gonna die here which again kind of comes back to the storytelling aspect where i don't think a lot of these stories have happy endings but this last track at least kind of feels very hopeful and bright because when this album gets dark and heavy, like nothing new under the sun with its cool syncopated chugs and the weeping lead melodies and very powerful but very sullen and desperate vocals. It even adds some cool vocal harmonies in that one that definitely add more misery to an already miserable song. But the thing that I really noticed in terms of like the song structure on here, and it's kind of an odd comparison, but it kind of reminds me of Killing Joke where they just sort of stretch out sections. It's, you know, kind of long-winded, but 
in mostly a good way. There are points in this album where it does drag a bit. But for the most part, I like that aspect because it kind of opens up the whole vocal passages. And again, AA does an amazing job on here. And with the storytelling aspect, I'm actually really entranced by the vocals and what he's saying. And generally that's just something that's like, you know, more decorative in a lot of stuff I listen to. All Against All is definitely a huge standout to the longest track and it is easily the darkest heaviest, most foreboding track on it. The cold, dissonant melody that carries it is absolutely infectiously catchy, but it's also just insanely dark. And this one sort of brings the doom out too. Like the riffs get heavier, more sinister. In fact, AA's vocal approach is probably at its darkest on this album. He's not doing a lot of like tuneful singing. It's more low groans and grumbles and it sounds notably more sinister. There's a lot of elements on there that remind me of Celtic Frost, especially in the more simplified, heavy, droning riffs. The end of it is probably one of my favorite moments because you start getting this repeated throat singing, sort of like groan in the background and then vocals that build on top of that. And it actually gets pretty damn epic. In a way, it feels like it's kind of clawing its way out of a very, very dark place probably like a tomb or a grave. And it's cool dynamics like that that keep this interesting, despite it being a very long, labored album. They weave all these sounds together very cleverly, and again, it feels very passionate. It feels very emotional. I really don't have a lot of complaints on here. I think the production's excellent. I love the vocal performance. Maybe some of it is a little bit long-winded, and you know, the more folky tracks, while I think they're well executed, folk metal really isn't my thing, but it is done so well. And again, most of this kind of weaves it in as more of a seasoning rather than being the main thing. So honestly, even that complaint really isn't a very big one. So I'm going to go ahead and give this four stars. Uh, I think I might need to listen to more Primordial after this because I really enjoyed this. This is epic without being cheesy. It's dark and sinister. It's, again, very moody. It's kind of all over the place emotionally, but it is done with so much passion. You can legit feel the heart that goes in these songs. They're very much like a, an outpouring of desperation or you know, sorrow or, you know, whatever they're going through, they're letting you know. And musically, these guys are excellent songwriters. The dynamics on here are absolutely fantastic. It keeps these songs very engaging, despite them being very long. Like, you do have a lot of long buildups, but they go to something. And, you know, generally they end in grand fashion with giant crescendos. Kind of has, like, all the tropes of, you know, longer songs that I like. If you're like me and you have just kind of slept on this band for years, um, in terms of comparisons, I would say like Enslaved is a really good one. If you're a fan of, you know, maybe Dread Sovereign, like you've been listening to that band, but you haven't been listening to this one, you've been doing shit ass backwards like me, uh, you would definitely really dig this too. I strongly urge you guys to check this one out. This is just quite an awesome album. So if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com. Our Patreon link is there. It is also on our channel, and our store is at thrallsmetal.com. We have new shirts. We have old shirts that are at a discounted price now, limited on sizes on those, and uh, we have hats now, too. If you are looking for some Thralls merch, that is exactly where to find it. And, of course, thank you guys so much for liking, subscribing, following, all that shit. It means the world to me. You guys are still definitely the real heroes here. I know I've said, like, every platitude at the end of these videos, but I mean it. You guys are absolutely awesome. We have a ton planned for you, tons of content coming out. So definitely stay tuned. And once again, thank you all, and we will catch you later.